Oh man, that was pretty sketchy. I was just walking on this track and I was about two foot away from stepping on a tiger snake. I just kind of came around the corner and it just, yeah, reared up its little head and I couldn't back away fast enough. That was, um, yeah, too close to comfort. Definitely back in snake season now, so I've got to watch myself. Hey viewers, uh, thanks again for joining me on another walkabout. Out here in Walmart National Park again. And man, it's an absolute pearl of a day, hey. Uh, it's middle of spring, so it's meant to get to the top about 30 degrees. Um, but <laughs> silly me, forgot my hat and my sunnies. There's always something I forget. Bit of a kook sometimes, but um, yeah, not going back to the same spot as last time. Just gonna, this time, walk up the river, basically till I find a nice little, yeah, spot to set up camp and um, hopefully somewhere I can throw a line in. Got the fishing rod and tackle this time, so. Yeah, pretty keen to see if I can um, yeah, get something for dinner. But yeah, so let's just uh, keep walking up the river until we can find a good campsite. Man, I'm pretty lucky, eh? So places like this, so close to home, this place is absolutely stunning. And there's not a single person around. I haven't seen one all day. Yeah, sure is a lucky country. Got it pretty good here. Oh man, I'm soaked. <laughs> Definitely misjudged how deep that was going to be. And um, a lot of this sand, it's kind of like quicksand. You step in it and you just sink a couple of feet. And <laughs> I just got so wet. At least it's sunny, so it should be able to dry off pretty quickly. Yeah, so this came out of the river just then, found this nice big sandy beach just here. So this could easily be the camp site for tonight. Uh, though I didn't bring a tent this time, I've got the... I've got a tarp, I've got a mat, like an inflatable mat, and I've got a hammock. So, depending on where I camp, um, if I can find some trees I'll probably string up the hammock. But here will be a bit difficult I think, unless you kind of get stuck in the, str um, in the scrub. So, I could try and make a little shelter out of the, the tarp, but... Still pretty early days, so I might just continue up the river a little bit more and see what else I can find. Yeah, so it's about 1.30. I don't think I'm gonna head up the river anymore. I think I'm probably gonna go back uh, to this sandy beach I found a little bit further back, just because the banks around here are so overgrown. Um, and I've already been walking for a couple of hours. It's getting pretty hot as well, so yeah, I don't wanna sort of push too much further. And it's, it's pretty tiring walking. On, um, yeah, on this wet sand, you just keep sinking and it's really, really starting to take some toll on my thighs. So I think I might go back to the other sandy beach and just get set up there and that way I have the rest of the day just to yeah, relax and go for a swim and go for a fish and not feel like I'm rushed later on. So I think that's what I'll do. Yeah, it's not a bad little spot around here. Just got the river right behind me. Pretty decent sized sandy beach. Uh, not quite sure where I'm gonna set up camp just yet. Got my stuff in the shade just over there, but could maybe put a mat down um, over there or haven't quite had a look around. Maybe try and find some trees to put the, the hammock up, but pretty keen to have some lunch and go for a swim now. 
man, this, this sand is absolutely boiling. So I like to stay in the shade for a bit. Yeah, so for lunch today, I've got this, the brand's called Serena, and it's an Italian style salad with rice and tuna. Um, yeah, it's actually really nice, eh? I tend to have it a fair bit when I go on my bushwalks and overnight camps. It is kind of annoying that it comes in a pretty big plastic container, so you kind of have to lug it out when you finish with it, but if it's just an overnight, it doesn't matter too much. Uh, yeah, pretty nice to get out of that sun. Man, it's a bit of a scorcher today. Um, definitely coming into summer, so it's starting to heat up pretty quickly. Although, this is probably the first proper sunny day we've had in about a month, hey. It's been, um, around Sydney, it has been pouring for about a month, non-stop. Probably the wettest October we've had in decades. So, it's kind of nice to see the sun. Um, but yeah, we definitely needed the, the rain. It was getting pretty dry for a while. You can tell the river's probably a little bit higher than it probably usually is, but it's not too bad. Um, it was a little bit, like after a couple of hours of sort of wading through the water, you get pretty tired legs. So I was pretty keen to stop. Originally I was planning to go a lot further up the river, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just, I didn't want to sort of spend all day, yeah, killing myself to get as far as I can. And then kind of be rushed this afternoon to get camp set up and go for a fish and stuff. I'd rather just, yeah, just relax now and go for a swim and just take my time to set up camp. So I think it's a good decision. Man, pl plenty of um, wildlife around today. I've already seen a wallaby, I've seen a live bird, a bush turkey, um, heaps of other birds. Uh, I've seen a, what else did I see? Oh yeah, a tiger snake, which I nearly stepped on, which is <laughs> a little bit too close for comfort. Um, a goanna, yeah, so plenty of things out, which is cool, yeah. Kind of during winter, you tend not to see too much, but coming into spring, yeah, everything seems pretty active, which is cool. As long as the snakes try and um, yeah, keep the keep the distance, which is good. Uh, I have a lot of people actually met, um, ask me, do we get crocs around this area? And because I'm sort of around the Sydney area, we don't get crocs around here. You t um, tend to find crocs around the top end, so around Northern Territory and um, yeah, Northern Queensland and stuff like that. So pretty lucky you don't have to put up with those in this river. But yeah, man, that'd be an absolute shame. <laughs> Especially like up north where it's so hot and humid, I'm sure you just want to go for a swim and you can't because, yeah, you'll probably get eaten. So, pretty lucky that there's not much um, in the river here that can really hurt you. So, anyway, speaking of, going to finish this off and then go for a swim pretty soon. Yeah, trying to find somewhere deep enough to dive in. A little bit difficult. Everything's kind of like knee deep, so I think it might just be a little, a little bit of a splash around. Uh, man, this. This white body has not seen the sun for about three or four months, so I apologize guys if it's a little bit pasty, but uh, yeah, <laughs> give me a few months and I'll get the tan back. All right, let's get in there. Man, this is the life. Oh yeah. All right, now that I've cooled off, I'm gonna try and um, have a look around and see where I should set up camp. It'd be nice to try and string up the, the hammock in between say like this branch here, going to this branch, but I don't know. I'm not quite sure how much I trust this branch. It seems to have a lot of give in it, so I don't want it snapping on me, so. Yeah, might just have a little bit more of a look around. It's got some dead bracken ferns here, so take some of them for tinder for later. Yeah, so just having a little look around the area. Uh, pretty nice back here, but the scrub, man, it gets so dense, eh? Hey? Looks like a nightmare to try and push through that. Yeah, I was trying to hope, hoping to see if I could find some edible berries or something, but yeah, not much luck, unfortunately. Still pretty nice back here.
Yeah, so for those who are interested, I thought I might do a quick rundown of what gear I decided to bring on this trip. Uh, first off, got my boots. Um, their brand's called Scarpa. I think these are the Terrors, if I remember correctly. Can't quite remember. Uh, awesome boots, absolutely love these. They're waterproof as well, so makes it pretty handy when you're sort of going through places like this. Uh, this is the bag I use a lot. So this is the um, Tasmanian Tiger Raid Pack. Absolutely love this bag. I think it's such a good bag. It's a little bit pricey, but yeah, like I said in my other video, it's super supportive. Um, yeah, I've hiked for five days and you barely even notice it after the five days. It hugs your, hugs your back really well and really, really like it. And it's got awesome side pockets, which was a pretty big um, selling point when I wanted to buy this bag. And yeah, speaking of, so we'll open it up. And then just in here, I've just got my Silky Gomboy folding saw. Absolutely love this thing. Really, really good. Uh, it's got a, a little grill to go over the, over the fire. I got this off uh, Amazon, I think it was. And the brand's called Expedition Research, if you want to look it up. Love this little thing, so handy. Uh, just got a little, oh, a little scara. I've got my sort of Pathfinders uh, 32 ounce um, canteen and then just with the nesting cup that comes with it which is what 750 mils I think it is and then just a little stand that put over the fire it's a nice nice little cook system there oh, yeah, that's just the lid for it and then in this side I've got my personal locator beacon this um, one's by ACR. Yeah, find this is pretty important to take, I think, in the bush. Especially like in Australia, I find there's just lots of little things um, that can bite you and sting you. So, yeah, especially around now, like today, almost got, um, almost stepped on a, a tiger snake. So, that was pretty close. Like, he was rearing up to bite me. I and mean, I was only about two foot away from him. So, yeah, he's saying, if I got bitten, I would have been in some pretty serious trouble. And, this thing could save my life, so I think it's really worth having. I should probably invest in some gators. Um, I don't have any of those, but something to look in down the track, but I think that's very handy to have. Just got my head torch. First aid kit. I'm not gonna go through all the contents of it, but uh, being Australia, being lots of snakes and stuff like that around, I do carry a couple of um, compression bandages just in case I do get bitten. I can wrap the limb up nice and tight, so until help comes at least. And I've just got a little wash towel, which is always handy because when I go for a swim, I just use this to wipe myself down. Uh, just a tea towel. On the front, I just attach some rope, just because you never know when it's going to come in handy. Weighs nothing barely, so it's always pretty handy. This is just some double-sided Velcro that I put on the front, so when I uh, strap my tripod, I can strap it to the front. Yeah, so that's the back system, so nice and supportive. It's got this nice big top, um, top pocket in there. I just keep like a bandana uh, for today's like today when yeah, I forgot my hat. So it kind of helps just to keep the, the sun off my forehead and keep the sweat off because right now there's heaps of little bushfires out. So they're just biting wherever you're sweating. So that helps. A little tinder pouch. Uh, this has got some paper bark in it. Uh, this is my bushcraft knife. Absolutely love this thing. Uh, this is made by a bloke called um, Gidgee, or his name's Scotty Simmons, but he goes by the name of Gidgee, uh, based up in northern Queensland. Just got a fire steel in that as well. Keys. Um, that's a little light that I put on top of my camera, just so I can film at night time. Always like to carry this around with me. Uh, Wild Food Plants of Australia by Tim Lowe. Awesome book. Really, really, really good. Probably the Bible when it comes to uh, bush foods. In Australia so it's got a lot of it's all, all around the country it's got a lot of stuff from the eastern eastern states but um, it, did, it does have stuff from from other states as well but yeah really good book to have learn a lot from that just a little flask uh, got when I was in America by from REI just yeah just keep some tawny or some musket some port in there for when you're sitting around the fire late at night it's nice to listen to some tunes and yeah sit back a bit of some tawny not a big whiskey or scotch fan, so I like to drink that. 
And then inside, just got my food bag. Probably bought a little bit too much for this one night, but yeah, figuring it was just one night, I thought, thought I might sort of um, go all out and bring a few little buck trees. This is a VanQuest, uh, I think it's a Husky. So yeah, VanQuest is the brand and Husky is the particular pouch, but absolutely love this thing. Just organizes everything. It's really, really handy. Otherwise you're rummaging through your bag trying to find bits and pieces. So yeah, I'll, I might open this up after I go through the whole bag and show you what's inside, but absolutely love that thing. Just a Snow Peak titanium plate, just so you can cook on the fire. Uh, also doubles as, because it's got a bit of a rim on it, doubles as a bowl as well, so pretty handy. Nice if I've got a couple of beers. I've got the Grifter and Young Henry's again. So I'll show you those guys later. Actually speaking of, I should probably chuck them in the river pretty soon just to cool them down a bit. That's just a speaker. Like I said, I like to listen to my tunes when I'm sitting around the fire at night, so. Uh, just a fishing reel to go with the fishing rod that I've got in here. So here's a, a travel rod. Uh, I think the brand's called Savage Gear. Um, yeah, so this breaks down into four pieces, so nice and compact. Body flies everywhere tonight, today. Just got a beanie in case it gets a bit chilly tonight and just some tackle. Uh, just a flannel. A uh, little, it's a brand, Cedar Summit, little inflatable pillow. Love this thing, so soft and comfortable. Backs down to absolutely nothing, so. This is my hammock that I use. It's by a brand called Alton. Really, really cool brand. Uh, it's a bloke up in Queensland, young guy, so sort of started up and yeah, it's always good to sort of support the, the local guys, um, their independence and stuff. So, really comfortable hammock. I've been using this for a year and a half or so and absolutely love it. Really, really cool. So I definitely recommend looking them up if you're in the in the market for a new hammock. Just got a jumper, in case it gets a bit chilly tonight. I think it's meant to drop down to about 11 or 13 degrees or so. Um, yeah, DD hammocks, three by three meter tarp. What else have I got in here? A little ground sheet, just cause I wasn't quite sure what kind of yeah, sleeping, I'm gonna like what kind of uh, setup I'm gonna do today. Wasn't quite sure if I was gonna be in the hammock or maybe on the ground with a mat and um, the tarp over me. So I just bought a few things just in case. That's my Mont sleeping bag. Love this thing. Bought it a couple months ago and so comfy. So, so comfy. And that's a Nemo inflatable air mattress. Um, I think. Oh, yeah, that's just a zip off to these pants as well. Yeah, so these pants are Fuel Raven. Oh man, I can't remember the name of them actually. Yeah, the brand's called Fuel Raven, but these particular style is a zip off ones. Maybe they're called the Carl? K A R L? Can't remember. Anyway, look it up. But yeah, for Fuel Raven, and yeah, really good pants, really good quality, I find. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty stoked with them. Bit pricey, but yeah, they seem like they're going to last a long time. And that's it. So, yeah, There's a few little things maybe I didn't really need to bring, but it wasn't a hard hike in, so yeah, kind of, um, yeah, bought a few things just in case because, like I said, I wasn't quite sure where I was going to be sleeping. I didn't know if I needed a hammock or whether I had to sleep on the ground, so just bought both, but it doesn't take up too much room. Yeah, um, maybe I'll go through the, where is it? Yeah, maybe I'll go through my VanQuest Husky and I'll show you what I've got in here. Yeah, so this is a FanQuest Husky organizer. So just in here I've got a Millbank bag, just for filtering water. Um, just a Sawyer filtration system. Just a little case pocket knife that I like to just keep in there. It's only small. It's got some nice little blades on it, just for doing finer work. Um, I get that open, yeah. Knife fork spoon, so yeah. Pretty straightforward. Uh, it's a little bit of paracord I just keep. I think it's about 1.5 meters or so. Just, um, yeah, never know when it's gonna come in handy and it's good if you wanna do a bow drill. Uh, it's the perfect length for that, so I like to keep that in there. Just a lighter, pencil. Uh, it's got my iPod down there. A small little flashlight, just in case my head torch runs out. Um, 
that's just a cord for my speaker. This is a little, little um, handle for the for the pill, uh, <laughs> a little handle for for the billy to get off the fire. That's some little, some bits of fat wood that I found when I was in America last year. So I just kind of keep that in there. And here I've just got some batteries uh, for the for the camera, those, and then just these double A, oh, triple A, double A, I don't know, triple A, um, just for the head torch. Yeah, just some cords to charge my iPod and my phone, and then that's a little, that's to charge my camera batteries. And this thing, Rav Power, um, what do you call it, Power Bank, yeah, it's a rugged one, so it's, yeah, it's kind of shockproof and weather resistant and stuff, so it's a really good power bank, probably get yeah, a fair few um, charges out of this one, which is good. And then I also just keep in here, oh, get that out. <laughs> um, little notebook, right in the rain notebook. So yeah, that's just some more memory cards. Yeah, so that's kind of what I keep in there. Keeps everything nice and organized. Absolutely love it. All right, so in terms of sleeping tonight, I think I've got two options. I either try and make like a little tarp shelter um, on the beach behind me, which is a little bit tricky because there's no, no trees around. So I'd have to try and sort of use some sticks and try and guy rope them out and make it pretty secure that way. Or I use the, the tree that I was sitting under before and just string up the hammock. And I know I said that it's, it's not the strongest tree, there's one branch that I have to hang off that's, yeah, I don't really trust it. I'm thinking if I can find some, some sticks with a little sort of wire notch at the top, uh, I can probably dig them into the sand and brace that branch. And I think that should, um, should be strong enough. Because ideally, I think I'd rather just sleep in the hammock there. It's not meant to rain tonight. I'd rather not put up the tarp. I think I'd just, yeah, basically just put the hammock up and, and call it a day. So, yeah, I think that's probably what I'm going to do. Yeah, so it just so happens, uh, someone before me has left a lot of firewood lying around, which is good. But they've also left these sticks here. So you can see that's got its little wire notch at the top. And there's also one over here. So I'm thinking it could be on here. So I'll give that a go. Oh man, <laughs> just saw another pretty decent sized snake, hey? There's a red-bellied black snake this time, and he just so happens to be right at the base of my tree, just over there. He was a big boy too. <laughs> There's bloody snakes everywhere this weekend. Um, yeah, do I still sleep there? She'll probably be right, so. I'd imagine if I'd hang around there, the snake might move on, so <laughs> yeah. Oh man, pretty sketchy, but I think I'll probably still go ahead with it. As you can see, it's got a fair bit of give in this branch. So I'm thinking of get one of these, maybe both of them, put it underneath it, cut it back, stick it in the ground. It should be strong enough. That's, it should be strong. Might um, chuck the other brace up just a bit of extra support, but I think it should work. Yeah, 
Yeah, so I've just put another brace a bit more of an angle because it was kind of leaning that way, so that should stop that bit of a swing. Yeah, I think that should be right. So I'm going to tie it off down here so all the weight's going to be pushing straight down that, that post and the other one I'm going to tie off to that branch there and that branch is pretty secure so yeah, I think that's good. Yeah, still pretty sketched out about the snake. It's probably just hiding around the corner, just waiting for his chance. Yeah, she'll be right, I hope. Just a simple overhand knot, just to make a loop. And through. Obviously just try and get it rough now, you can always adjust it once, once you've sat in it. So you can see that when I sit in it, it brings a branch this way, so I'm going to have to adjust the, the post so that it lines up once it moves. I think I might put this post, rather than going the other way, maybe going this way. Because since it's pulling this way, it wasn't really doing much when it was facing the other direction, so give it a test. Yeah. That heat's more stable. This part doesn't move at all, so it's putting all the, the weight on those posts, which is good. Yeah, that should work. Now hopefully the, the snake stays away. <laughs> Good to see someone was kind enough to already chop and leave all this wood behind for me. Makes life a lot easier. Nice dense timber, got a lot of weight to it. Mm, smells pretty seasoned, see how it burns. So I just saw this snake again, and he just slithered down into, I think it's a little out of focus, but there's a little hole just in there. And he just went down there. So, he obviously lives here. That's where my hammock is. Right next to his home. Yeah, so 
Hopefully he keeps his distance and I'll keep mine. <laughs> this whole fishing thing a go again. Yeah, so as expected, not much luck with this whole fishing thing. Yeah, a little bit frustrating, but it was still nice to sort of, yeah, just spend the time watching the sunset. It's a pretty nice evening tonight, but yeah, a little bit frustrating. Um, there are little fish in the river, but nothing worth catching. Maybe it's not dark enough yet. Maybe they come out a bit later. Uh, from what I've read, from what I've read, you definitely get bass in this river. So they are here. It's just whether it's the right time of year or the right time of night. I'm not quite sure. Lots to learn, so if you guys have any pointers, yeah, feel free to leave a comment because I'm a bit of a rookie at this. Uh, but anyway, I might get a fire started because it's going to start getting dark pretty soon, so. Oh, 
that's a decent fly out here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll show you what beers I got for tonight. We've got Young Henry's, the Sum Hop Ale. If you guys have watched most of my videos, you'll probably notice that um, yeah, I drink Young Henry's a fair bit. I've said in my previous video that I do a lot of illustration work for these guys. I actually illustrated the can for him, which is pretty cool. It's pretty cool to have your own beer can, but um, yeah, so definitely check these guys out. They're from Newtown in Sydney, and yeah, they're really cool guys producing some really good beer, so definitely check them out. And I've also got, oh man, that fire is pretty hot. Um, I've also got Grifter. So these guys, this is the Grifter Pale Ale. So these guys are also out of Sydney, out of Marrickville, which is just next to Newtown. So basically around the corner from the um, Young Henry's. Yeah, just a bunch of young guys, start a brewery, and yeah, doing pretty well. I absolutely love this beer. This is probably up there with, um, yeah, top three favorite beers, I reckon. So yeah, you can definitely hunt this down. It's a little bit hard to find. If you're in Sydney, you can find it around the inner city. Uh, a lot of um, pubs and bottlers tend to stock it, but yeah, as you get out of the city, it's pretty hard to track down, but um, yeah, definitely try it. If you're into craft beer and sort of pale ales and stuff like that, yeah, definitely track it down. It's a very sessionable pale ale, I reckon. So, pretty keen to crack it open. Oh man, it's just so easy to drink. Absolutely love it. So easy. There's that many birds around. Uh, I find Walmart National Park has tons of birds. It's pretty cool. It's back at home. Yeah, you get the odd, you get you get a few birds, but nothing like here. Like you just constantly have lyre birds and yeah, carawongs and stuff just echoing through the through the valley, which is pretty cool. It's a pretty beautiful place here. Pretty stoked that I came back a second time. I think I'll keep going back here. It's just so much of the river you can explore. Anyway, to finish this off soon, um, enjoy this, and then I'll chuck on some grub pretty soon. Got a, uh, what got tonight? Uh, so, oh yeah, stir fry, that's right. <laughs> I almost forgot. Yeah, I got a stir fry tonight, so yeah, pretty keen to chuck that on soon. Yeah, so for tonight I've got an Asian stir fry. So I've just got some long life dried noodles. Some broccoli, some capskin, and some spring onion. And then for the sauce, I've got this Kewpie. The brand's called Kewpie, and I think it's a roasted sesame uh, sauce. Really nice. Have it all the time at home. Oh, and I've just got some oil to go with it. Yeah, I've, I think I've, I've made it once, a couple of months ago, um, camping. And it turned out really well. So, And I always make it at home, so I thought I'd yeah, bring this for tonight. So I'll, just, um, I'll get some water boiling first. So broccoli and caps again are pretty much my go-to for any meal. You probably guys have realized that by now, but pretty much whatever I'm having, I pretty much always add caps again and broccoli to it. That 
is a lot of noodles. <laughs> that looks like a pretty big meal. We'll just get the cupy sauce. Yeah, now just mix that through and it should be done. Might actually take it off the, the heat now. Kind of got to stir it through, so. Yeah, it's a little bit difficult to stir in such a small pan, but I think it's working out all right. It's looking pretty good. Smelling absolutely delicious as well. All right, I think that is done. Nice and quick meal. That probably only took about, gosh, 10 minutes max, I reckon. So a real quick, easy meal. Ah, oh, damn. <laughs> I'm always losing the food, aren't I? All right, I can just to finish it off. Some lemon. Oh yeah. All right, moment of truth. Man, that is delicious, hey. That is so tasty. I cook this all the time at home, and I never get sick of it. Such a, yeah, tasty dinner. And it's not very hard cooking on the fire too, like, it's only a few ingredients, and uh, within five, 10 minutes, you're done. So yeah, definitely gonna keep it up. It's a pretty, um, pretty tasty dinner. Anyway, I'm not gonna eat and talk, so. I'll finish this off and I'll get back to you guys in a bit. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> oh. <laughs> There was a noodle in my beer. <laughs> oh man, I thought that was a bug. Oh. <laughs> oh, whoops. Hopefully that's the last noodle. <laughs> oh, that, that surprised me. Whoops. <laughs> oh man, it's nice just to sit back and relax now. There's so many stars out. I don't think there's a cloud in the sky. Such a calm, still night. There's not a breath of wind either. I'm hoping uh, there's not going to be too many mozzies or insects around tonight because I don't have a um, mosquito net for the hammock. So, yeah, fingers crossed it's not too bad. So, I think it's meant to get a little bit chilly tonight. So, once I put my pants on and my jumper on, it should be sweet. But yeah, I think I'm pretty glad to get off the ground there. I've seen so many little spiders and little nasties running around. So yeah, pretty keen to get back in the hammock now. Now that spring started and it started to warm up again. Yeah, hammock's um, yeah, super comfy. Some people don't like the hammock camping. They find they get a sore back, but when you line it right, yeah, I like it. I love it. It's um, pretty comfortable. Yeah, sorry I haven't got out recently for any camping videos. I've been pretty busy the last couple of weeks. Uh, been going to so many open houses. Like I said in one of my previous videos, me and my missus are yeah, looking to buy a house and um, yeah, just gosh, the last month, every Saturday is just jam packed full of open houses. So yeah, <laughs> been pretty exciting times. Um, but yeah, I think, we've, I think we found a place that we're pretty keen on. We put an offer in uh, on Thursday so two days ago, so we're just waiting to hear back from the vendors whether they, well we put an offer in originally and um, they wanted a little bit more so we kind of upped it a little bit and we're just waiting to hear back whether they're going to accept the new offer. Um, the agent seems to be, yeah, she thinks we've got a pretty good chance at it because it hasn't had too many um, interest in this property but it's a beautiful little cottage house, a cottage style house and yeah, we're pretty keen to get it so yeah, fingers crossed. And then finally, once that's done, I can go back to, yeah, having my weekends back, which would be, which would be, which would be good because, yeah, pretty keen to get back out there and, yeah, start doing a lot more camping coming into spring, or already into spring, coming into summer. Got a trip coming up 
in a couple of weeks time with a mate, we're gonna go kayaking. I haven't actually quite decided yet where we're gonna go. I think we might go down sort of the Shoalhaven River somewhere, maybe um, Tallow Dam or something like that. So pretty keen for that. Haven't done a kayak uh, camping trip for, gosh, yeah, a good eight months or so since the start of the year. So yeah, pretty keen to get back out there and get on the water. Looking into also, once we buy this place, because um, this place we're gonna buy is right near the beach, um, right near the water, so yeah, pretty keen to, well, it's in a bay, basically, and so we're pretty keen to get a, a canoe or something so I can take it out and go paddling, which means if I do get a canoe, it's gonna open up a lot more, yeah, camping trips, uh, well, like a different style. It means I can sort of, yeah, go find lakes or, and um, yeah, spend some time on lakes. I think that'd be pretty fun. So yeah, that should be good. Uh, apart from that, I think there's really a whole lot else to be talking about. So yeah, I'll sit back and then enjoy a bit of the bush telly and I'll um, chat to you guys in the morning. Good morning guys. Woke up to a pretty average morning this morning. It's just started to rain. I just got the fire going and then it started to sprinkle and now it's getting a little bit heavier. So yeah, I don't know if I should set up the tarp or just wait it out. I even just get the tarp out and just wrap it over me and my gear. Uh, I don't really feel like setting it right up, but 
I haven't had breakfast yet. I was hoping to cook breakfast now, but might just uh, wait for this to pass over. Hopefully it does pass over. And uh, yeah, then I get some grub on after that. Here I've just got some milk powder. Let's add, add some water to it. And then in this one I've got some Milo. Oh yeah, breakfast of champions. Yum. Yeah, so good to see the rain's kind of died off. I didn't really want to sort of pack up and hike back in the rain. It would have been pretty miserable. <laughs> hiking in the rain in the water for two and a half hours but yeah at least it um yeah at least it didn't sort of come during the night like last night didn't have any issue obviously it didn't have a tarp or anything over the over the hammock and yeah it didn't have any uh, any bugs or anything and yeah it didn't have any issue with rain so that was pretty good i did wake up at about maybe about one o'clock or something and man the moon because i think full moon was two nights ago it was so bright, like you could see everything. So that was that was pretty cool. Not gonna hang around here for too much longer. Pretty much basically just eat this, take the hammock down, pack up and and walk out here because I think it's probably about a two hour, two and a half hour walk along the river back to the campsite. I'm back to the track that takes you back to the car. And uh, yeah, then about in about an hour and a half drive home, so yeah, don't, don't sort of want to hang around for too much longer. Especially if the weather's not the best. But, yeah, anyway, I'm going to enjoy this and I'll chat to you guys before I leave. guys well that's me all done i've packed up put the fire out and I'm about ready to walk on out of here so as always thanks so much for watching guys i really appreciate all your support and if you're new to the channel um you could like comment and subscribe that really helps me out I'm trying to showcase the aussie bush to the rest of the world so anyway until next time guys hooroo